Welcome back, troglodytes, to your daily dose of guitar information, the Trogly's Guitar Show. All right, so I was hunting reverb a couple of days ago, and I came across the strangest factory Les Paul classic I have ever seen. Like, it was so strange, I was like, yeah, right, buddy, that can't be factory. But then I looked him up, and yep, apparently Gibson was crazy in the mid-90s. So tonight, let's take a look at the 1996 Gibson Les Paul Classic Premium Plus from 1996. Les Paul Classics are actually pretty cool guitars. They were first introduced in very late 1989, with 1990 being that first full year. And they've pretty well been in production ever since then. But the specs have changed quite a bit. The most desirable ones were made before 1993. There were also custom shop versions of the classic made, but this is not one of them. This is just a premium plus, meaning it has a really nice top. And I mean, taking a look at this thing, it's like a trans amber color, and it is a nice top. I've got to say that. Maybe it's just the strange angle that we're looking at this one at, but it's just a nice flame top. But something you'll also notice that's different about this one is, hey, gold hardware. That's not necessarily what I think of when I think a Les Paul classic. But no, it is not the gold hardware that makes this thing so strange, because that was nothing new at this time. Take a look at the back on this thing. It blew my mind that there was a blue back run of Les Paul Classics. Like, I love weird oddball stuff, but even this one almost comes into the category of it's too weird to even be true. Like, I'm sure it looks kind of cool in person, but I'm just not quite sure how I feel about this outside of it being a quirky model. Now doing it the opposite way, like a blue top and a natural back, that works flawlessly. But for some reason when you flip flop that and call it a Les Paul classic, it, it just feels so wrong. And it's not even like it's a super dark blue color, it's just straight up blue. With an amber top, they're not even trying to hide it. At the back of our serial number, it looks like it says 6 and then it's got some other digits for the production number. So that is a 1996 and once again, gold tuners. Bizarre. That's all I've got to say. And this one was listed 5 years ago for $3,000 and it apparently sold for somewhere around there based off of an offer. But after knowing that these things existed, I, I wanted to know why. Why did they exist? And nobody really seems to have good information. Like this guy says the price was more than $5,000 at issue date. That doesn't quite sound right for 1996. And all the specs besides the non-traditional finish and the gold hardware seems to be just a average, regular, run-of-the-mill, nice top Les Paul classic. So I did a little bit of digging. And this was the second one I found. I, I forgot to save the first listing. But I did find another one like this. Now, the amber finish on this one, it almost kind of looks more like a trans black to me. So maybe there was some sort of a limited edition blue backed run. But this one, you can see it's still got the same gold hardware, the gold APR1 bridge, the gold bell style knobs. Everything's looking pretty good on this one. And the rosewood fretboard kind of matches the finish as well. It has very vague boneyard vibes going on. But then, just like the other one, it's a blue back. However, this one, it's either the lighting that makes it look a darker blue than it really is, but this blue back almost seems to make a little bit more sense to me, especially since it's not as an ambered over finish up here. It's like somebody accidentally got some blue on the top anyways. I could not imagine Gibson releasing something like this today from Gibson USA and trying to sell a whole bunch of them. I think what makes these things cool is the limited edition factor and now the fact that they're what, 24 plus years old. And in this listing, they have this article right here. But unfortunately, in reading it, this does not actually seem to pertain to this. Whenever you see an article in this style, that's the great Mike Slabowski. I give a lot of credit for this guy's articles for really fueling my fire in loving limited edition Gibson guitars and learning the history about stuff and documenting them in video format. And if we visit this article, basically uh, he just tells you the Les Paul classic history and you can see one photo back here of a blue backed one, but all this information down here doesn't seem to pertain to the blue back classics, but it does talk about a shortly lived classic premium plus limited edition where they did a translucent blue finish on the top as well as trans brown, red, 
The green's kind of really cool. And apparently the black never even made it to production, but Slavowski, he custom ordered one so he could have a complete set. But these guys were special because of the 490R, 498T pickups. Usually the classics would have the 496R, 500T pickups. So I don't think our answers quite lie on this page. But we can take a look at some of these nice ones in his collection. I always get people asking me, how do I afford to buy these guitars? Well, it's kind of like a never-ending effect here where I buy a guitar, I make a video, and then I sell the guitar, and I make a little bit of money to make it worth my time making the video, and then yes, I also get ad revenue from YouTube. So it's just kind of like a snowball effect. I can slowly afford more and more expensive guitars, things like that. Now Slobowski, he's in the healthcare profession, so <laughs> that answers how this guy can have so much and actually keep them but I always enjoy visiting his website and taking a look at some of the guitars he has. It's great that he shared them to the world. And that's why I've dedicated my life's work to doing something very similar, and I would really like to revamp my website. I've got somebody working on some of that stuff, where I'd like to also have really well-written articles to accompany my videos, because, because it's not always feasible to watch a 10-20 to minute video to get the information that you need. But I just want to stop my story right here real quick to say this is... The gorgeous color. I love it because most of these still have the natural backs. Now green and blue, I guess that would have a certain charm, but the natural back with a color top, that works for me. It looks great. I think the last one from our collection here is this red one. It's very cool. And the only other blue back that I've seen as far as documented sales on reverb and whatnot was this one. Once again, it's a blue back kind of a, a muted brownish color. This might actually have been the same guitar that was purchased. But yet on this one, in the neck pickup cavity, it says T blue for trans blue, and you can see the original trans blue finish here. So this is not necessarily a blue back. It's just a really faded out color. All right, so that adds a whole nother level of complications here. So I think this one right here is a part of the Slabowski article, limited edition ones. Because he was saying the blue ones got the blue, and then I think one of these other ones got that where the rest was just natural. However, this one, that, that's not a faded finish. It's not. It had to have left the factory as an amber one, and I've seen at least one other one that's definitely confirmed amber. So I guess I don't really have a 100% answer tonight, but I wanted to share these strange finds anyways. But that's definitely a faded blue now that we look at that closer. So I guess that takes us down to two blue back examples. All right, let's go ahead and check out a Les Paul classic. The only question left, would you rock an amber top blue back Les Paul classic or not? Leave your answer down in the comment section below. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and we will see you tomorrow on the next episode. Take care.